Hello Algebra 2 students. Um, this video is just going to give us a little bit of an introduction on what we're going to be doing next time in class. So we're going to be talking about um, some really important identities, some fundamental identities um, which include the reciprocal trigonometric identities and the Pythagorean trigonometric identities. It is really important that we know these going into class next time because next time not only do we need to know these values but we need to actually use them in problems so your life is going to be much easier if you know them. Um, so first thing first, you guys should have this um, note handout downloaded, um, whether it's on MyOLU or Box, depending on who your teacher is, um, make sure you guys have that downloaded ready to go. So. Um, we're going to start talking about what we call the reciprocal identities. And we've actually worked a lot with reciprocals so far this year. Um, in fact, this pat all year long we know a reciprocal means basically that I am flipping my fraction. A number or anything times its reciprocal is equal to 1. Yes, I have low battery, but don't worry, this video won't be long. We'll get through it. Um, so we learned when we were putting stuff into our calculator, especially we had to know these, that the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So we're going to go ahead and write sine of theta is equal to 1 over cosecant of theta. I do want to point out that it's very important that we use our angle um, symbols. We can never just take sine of nothing. We're, we're always taking a trig function of an angle. Okay, cosine is our next one. So the reciprocal of cosine we learned was secant. So I'm going to write the cosine of theta is equal to 1 over secant of theta. Likewise, we would say the cosecant, um, that its reciprocal is sine. So I'm going to write that as 1 over sine theta. And secant's reciprocal is cosine. So I'm going to write that as 1 over cosine. So these are our first four reciprocal identities. Um, this is something you guys already knew. We're just writing it in a slightly different way. The other two that you guys already know is that we learned that tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of one another. So I'm going to write tangent is 1 over cotangent theta. And cotangent theta is like 1 over tan theta. You guys may notice that we have another blank for tan and cotangent. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to let you know that tangent is also equal to sine of theta over cosine theta. And I want to take a moment just to talk about that. Okay, we've learned previously that sine is opposite over hypotenuse and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So when I divide by a fraction, I am multiplying by the reciprocal. So I have opposite over hypotenuse times hypotenuse over adjacent. My hypotenuses cancel out, and I'm left with opposite over adjacent, which is the trig function, or the, um, is, that's the, the ratio for tangent. Cotangent, same exact idea. We know cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so instead of sine over cosine, it is cosine theta over sine theta. Now one important thing for us to note is that these identities also hold when both are raised to the same power. So if we see sine squared, we could think of that as one over cosecant squared. If we have cosine squared, we would think of that as one over secant squared. Okay, and one important note when we are squaring trig functions, if I'm writing sine squared, we always write the squared right after the trig function before the angle. Okay, so that's how we will see it written all the time and it is important that we're writing it correctly. So these are eight reciprocal identities. Once again, most of them we already know. Okay, the other two that, the only two we didn't really know that well were these two. But if we take the time in memorizing or if we're using common sense um, with our sine and cosine ratios, they should make sense to us. Okay, knowing these values are going to be very important for what we're going to do next class, so make sure you guys know these going into class. 
Okay, the final three are the Pythagorean identities, and I'm actually just going to lead you through the first one, and then the second two, you guys are going to have to figure out on your own. So I just drew myself a triangle here, and I'm going to call theta the one that is closest to the origin. Now, I'm going to label all of our sides the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse. And I know that everybody's favorite, favorite formula that deals with a right triangle is the Pythagorean theorem. So we actually can use the Pythagorean theorem here. And instead of o opposite, I'm going to write O and so forth. So I can write O squared plus A squared equals H squared. So regardless of what these values are, we know since it's a right triangle, this should be true. And you guys can also see this being proved with a unit circle as well. Um, I know that we've worked more with the triangle, so I think that might make a little bit more sense to us. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by h squared. And this gives us something that should look a little bit familiar, okay? In fact, since I've squared over squared, I'm going to make this O over H squared plus A over H squared. And I know anything divided by, it by itself is just one. Now, if we think about it, opposite over hypotenuse is one of our trigonometric functions. That is sine. So I'm going to write this as sine squared plus adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine squared, and that is equal to 1. This is our very first Pythagorean identity. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write this up top where it says Pythagorean identities. Um, you guys will never be tested on how we come up with it, but sometimes it's helpful to know where that comes from. There are two more Pythagorean identities. And the second one, you guys are going to get by using the same method and dividing everything by cosine squared. The third one, you are going to use the same method again and divide sine squared plus cosine squared equals one by sine squared. Okay, so I'm just gonna write out the first step of what you are going to be doing. And it is up to you guys to use all of the identities that we've written on this page to help simplify this so that we don't have any fractions. Remember that if I have things that are squared, those reciprocal fundamental identities still apply. Okay, for number three, sine squared, we're going to do the same thing. Just instead of dividing by cosine squared, we're going to divide by sine squared. So I want you guys to go ahead and finish that one on your own and do that third one on your own. There is a quiz on SchoolNet, and it is going to be 10 questions that are multiple choice, and you guys can actually use this note handout on your quiz. It is time, so you only have five minutes to do the 10 questions, but it should be um, really quick for you, especially since I have this sheet in front of me. When you guys come into class, um, we definitely need to know these, and we are going to skip straight into learning how to use these, because I'm sure some of you are wondering why we need to know them. So, um, Study these 11 fundamental trig identities. They are going to be very important for us this chapter. And have a great rest of the night.